Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mr. Fincham's Fireside Follow-Alongs, and today we are going to mix it up a little bit. We are going to be reading our science textbook. Um, If you guys forgot how to access this, um, remember you guys just go to My Bethel, and then Teach TCI, and that will bring you to where you enter your login information, and you will see 100% NGSS, which you tap. And then you're going to go to <clears throat> Unit 4, Earth, the Moon, and the Stars. And that is going to bring you to the Overview section here on the left. You're just going to go down to Text with Notes. And it should bring you right here to page 274, which is where we want to be. Um, so if you do not have your uh, this pulled up, that's okay. You can just watch and follow along. Um, Otherwise, you can uh, pause this video and open your books. As always, there's going to be a question or activity for the readings today, and here is the activity for today. Excuse me. After reading the assigned text for the day, your job is to create a graphic to show what you learned. You can use Seesaw, Keynote, Pages, or other graphic apps or software, or even a blank sheet of paper for this assignment. You're going to create an image that represents what you learned today in the science reading. Images you have to include in your graphic are, number one, you got to have a title. A title that represents the overarching main idea of what you read. Remember, main idea, details, 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 what's it all about? Your main idea. So just your title, okay? Number two, include four key facts or quotes from the text in your image. So four things that you feel are super important or four facts that you feel relate to the reading um, in a, a very essential way. Include those. And number three, include an image. You can either draw it or you could get it from somewhere else. Um, You also are allowed to include any additional items you like. Um, The point of this activity is to use your creative side to show what you learned. And as always, uh, directions for this are available on the ELA questions and tasks section under the newsletter. And without further ado, we are going to begin our reading. Uh, Lesson 1, Unit 4, What Does Gravity Do? For those of you who are on the Teach TCI, notice there is a little bar up here. If you guys go ahead and click the main idea section, um, it's going to highlight certain things that are essential for the reading. Now, there's none on this page, but I want you guys to remember that's there. Okay. So, what does gravity do? And here is the vocabulary. And we're going to start with the first paragraph. What is causing the skydiver to fall downward? You will learn about a force called gravity. Gravity pulls you and all objects near the Earth's surface toward the Earth's center, but it is stronger and weaker at different places. Earth's gravity can also pull objects in space, such as meteoroids, down to Earth. Objects in space, like the sun and moon, have gravity too. So this is your check for understanding section. What is it that you see in this paragraph, or uh, in this photograph? List some things that you see. What direction do you think he's moving? Is he moving up or down? What do you think is causing him to move in that direction? So if you guys want to pause the video and click some of these um, things on your own TCI, um, feel free. But we are going to go to the next section here. Section 1. Gravity pulls you toward Earth's center. Now we're going to try that main idea thing again. Let's see. So notice how when I click it and unclick it, certain things are highlighted, right? I'm just going to leave it on for this section, and we are going to start right here. You, when you jump into the air, you fall back to the ground. When you drop an egg, it falls to the floor. When skydivers jump from planes, they fall to Earth. You, the egg, and the skydivers all fall because you are pulled downward by the force called gravity. And so here is the vocab word, gravity. Notice it's it's underlined in a different um, 
a different color than the rest, right? So gravity is a force of attraction. This means that gravity is a force that pulls on objects but does not push on them. All objects on or near Earth's surface are pulled down by Earth's gravity towards Earth's center. If you throw a ball up in the air, you know that the ball will fall. Objects fall because gravity pulls them toward Earth's center. Gravity keeps objects on Earth's surface from floating away into space. So here is a picture of kind of what humans are like uh, when they stand on Earth. Now notice right here, the part that says up for, for these group of people. It looks like they're in South America. And over here, this guy just off the coast of South America. Um, or off the coast of Mexico, I'm sorry. So this is off the coast of Mexico. This is off the coast of South America. It looks like one of them is upside down and you would think would fall off the earth. But they don't because gravity is pulling them towards the center right here, right? So we're going to go to the second paragraph. Like magnetic force, gravity works without objects having to touch. Recall that a magnet has a magnetic field around it. Similarly, Earth has a gravitational field around it, which is why objects not touching Earth's surface are still pulled towards the center of the planet. How you sense up and down is related to the pull of gravity. Suppose Earth was made of glass and you could see all the way through it. People standing on the other side of Earth would appear to be upside down to you, and you would look upside down to them. Yet, people on Earth, no matter where they stand, still feel like they're standing right side up. Whenever you stand on Earth, gravity is pulling you straight down towards its center. So, down is always in the direction gravity pulls. Up is always the direction opposite to the pull of gravity. And there is a little check your understanding thing here. I encourage you guys to pause the video and log on to Teach TCI and, um, and take a look at some of these answers and, and try, try to test your knowledge. And it's okay if you get them wrong because it should show you the right answer. Um, and that just means you're learning, so that's good. There is also another um, activity down here. If you notice, number one, draw and label a diagram of Earth from space that illustrates the passage from the student text. So, here's the passage right here. You're going to draw a diagram on this space um, that illustrates what this is saying. Okay? Alright, and we're going to go to the next section here. Section 2, Gravity Causes Meteors. And again, I'm going to click this main idea tab, see if anything changes. Yep, we got some changes. Okay. Gravity causes meteors. On a clear night, you might look up at the sky to observe the moon and the stars. If you are patient, you may see a streak of light in the sky. What is the source of the light? And here is, here's a picture of one, right? When space objects come near Earth, they are pulled toward the center of Earth because of gravity. Meteors such as the one in this image, are streaks of light that occur when chunks of rock fall through the atmosphere. And so here is the paragraph we're going to start on, just below the picture. This streak of light begins as a chunk of rock, or meteoroid, floating in space. There are lots of these objects in space. When one comes close enough to Earth, gravity pulls it through the atmosphere towards Earth's center. As the objects get closer to the Earth's surface, Earth's pull gets stronger, and they fall faster and faster. As they fall through the atmosphere, they squeeze the air in front of them together. The object gets very hot as it falls through the air. This air then also gets very hot and begins to glow. So, as the meteoroids speed through the sky, they look like bright streaks of light. The streak, the streak of light that a falling meteoroid produces is called a meteor. From Earth, a meteor can look like a shooting star across the sky. This is why you might, people, you might hear people use the term shooting star to describe them. And then here's a little image of one. The leftover chunks of meteoroids that cool after they hit the Earth from meteorites. Last paragraph. Most meteoroids burn up in Earth's atmosphere and never reach the ground. 
But sometimes really large meteoroids do not burn up all the way. They hit the ground at very high speeds and the leftover chunk of material cools and forms a rock called a meteorite. Meteorites are usually as small as grains of sand, but some meteorites are much larger. The largest one ever found was discovered in Africa and weighs more than 54,000 kilograms. That's about 119,000 pounds, so a little over half a ton. And here is another little activity here for you guys to do. Draw and label a diagram showing how Earth's gravity creates meteorites, shooting stars, or meteorites. So make sure you use the following items in your drawing. So you have to make sure that you use atmosphere, gravity, meteor, meteorites, and space. All right, we're going to go to the next section here. Page 277. Gravity is strongest at Earth's surface. I'm going to turn on the main idea tab here. So, first paragraph. You know that Earth has a gravitational force that reaches from its center to beyond Earth's surface. How far does it reach? And how strong is it when it is far away from Earth? Earth's gravity acts like magnetic and electric forces. Recall that these forces between objects get stronger when the objects are closer to each other. Similarly, the strength of the force of gravity changes when objects move closer together or farther apart. Earth's gravity pulls strongest on objects resting near sea level. This is because these objects are closest to the Earth's surface. If you climb to the top of, the mount, of a mountain, Earth's gravity pulls you a little bit less. But you must go very high before you'll be able to notice gravity's pull weakening. Even in an airplane or on top of Mount Everest, the difference in force of gravity will be hardly noticeable. The next paragraph. Think about throwing a ball up in the sky really hard. You throw it so hard that it flies up higher than airplanes fly and goes into outer space. As the ball flies higher and higher, Earth's gravity pulls on it less and less. If you threw the ball hard enough, eventually Earth's gravity would not be pulling on it for it to fall back to Earth. Or it wouldn't be pulling on it enough for it to fall back to Earth's surface. It would float off into space, but no one is strong enough to throw a ball that high. So Earth's gravity kind of works like a magnet. The closer that some magnets get to each other, um, you, you know, the harder that they pull towards each other. But if they are far enough away, there's no pull at all. Next paragraph. Scientists and engineers send vehicles to explore outer space. They design rockets with powerful engines. The engines push the rocket up with much more force than a person can throw a ball. The force is greater than Earth's gravity pulling back to Earth. As a space vehicle moves farther and farther away from Earth, Earth's gravity becomes weaker and weaker. And here is a picture of a rocket. And here's a little caption underneath. The pull of Earth's gravity is strongest on objects at sea level. As a space vehicle moves away from Earth's surface into outer space, the force of Earth's gravity becomes weaker and weaker. And here's another little ac ac short answer activity down here. You know that Earth has a gravitational field that reaches beyond Earth's surface. Answer this question in a well-written paragraph. Is gravity as strong far away as it is close to Earth? To support your argument, quote evidence from the student text. So I encourage you guys to answer this and use the race strategy. So restate the question. Is gravity as strong far away as it is close to Earth? And you are going to obviously answer the question and cite some text evidence and explain or elaborate what you mean. We're going to go to the next section here. Section 4. All objects have gravity. All objects have gravity. You have learned about how Earth's gravity pulls objects down towards its center. What other objects do you think have gravity? Well, all objects have gravity that pulls other objects toward their center. 
but the strength of an object's gravity depends on the object's size. Larger objects have stronger gravity and smaller objects have weaker gravity. The force of gravity of most objects around you is very weak. It is so weak that you do not even notice it. The force of gravity from very large objects, on the other hand, is strong enough to cause effects that you can notice. You might think that a truck or a house is very large, but they are not big enough for you to feel their gravity. Even mountains are too small for you to feel their gravity. Other than Earth itself, there are no objects on Earth big enough for you to feel the force of their gravity. But there are objects you are familiar with whose gravity pulls noticeably on other objects. Can you guess what they are? The sun's gravity. When you see the sun in the sky, it does not look very large. But the sun is actually much larger than Earth. The sun is so big that over one million Earths could fit inside of it. This means that if the sun were the size of a basketball, Earth would be smaller than a sesame seed. So that's how large the sun is. Look at this little picture here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can get a better, a better view of it. Oh, and the menu seems to block it. So here's Earth, this little tiny blue dot. And here's the sun. All right, we're going to go to the next paragraph. Since the sun is so large, its gravity is very strong. The sun's gravity is much stronger than Earth's gravity. So why are we pulled toward Earth's center instead of the sun's? The reason is the same as the reason that the sun appears in this so small in the sky. It is that the sun is very far away from Earth. If you had a piece of string long enough to stretch from Earth to the sun, it would be long enough to wrap around the Earth nearly 3,733 times. Since the sun is so far from Earth, its gravity pulls on objects, or its gravity pulls on objects on Earth less than, gra than Earth's gravity does. So in other words, it's kind of back to the magnet thing. We can feel the Earth's, uh, excuse me, we can feel the Earth's gravity because we're so close to it, just like a magnet. If you put a magnet close to another magnet, they can feel the pull. But the sun is so far away, we don't get to feel its gravity which is why if you pull a magnet far away from another magnet, they won't be pulled together. It's just distance. And next paragraph up here. The sun's gravity has another import, very important effect on Earth. The sun's gravity makes Earth follow an orbit around the sun. An orbit is a curved path that an object makes around another object. If the sun's gravity were not as strong as it is, Earth would not follow an orbit around the sun. Instead, it would drift off into space, far away from the sun. So we circle the sun. We go around the sun. The reason why we stay in this path is because we're pulled by the sun's gravity to stay near it. If the gravity was weak, we would just float off away from the sun. next paragraph the moon's gravity the moon is another familiar object whose gravity is noticeable you do not feel the moon's gravity when you are on earth but if you stood on the moon you would feel it so the force of the moon's gravity is not as strong as the force of earth's gravity if you were standing on the moon you could jump much higher than when you jump on earth but you would still fall back down to the surface because the moon's gravity would pull you toward the moon's center Here's a picture of astronaut. Astronauts are able to walk on the moon because the moon's gravity pulls them towards the moon's center. And I encourage you guys to check out um, the check your understanding questions. There's four of them. And draw and label a model that shows Earth orbiting the sun and the moon orbiting Earth. I'd be interested if you guys could take a screenshot of some of the models you draw and send them to me. I want to ch check out some of your science artwork. All right. Section 5. Weight is the force of gravity. Your weight can go up and down depending on the foods you eat and the activities you participate in. Did you know that your weight also changes depending on where you are? When you step onto a scale, the weight it shows is how much the force of gravity is pulling on you. 
So if you stepped on a scale at sea level and then stepped on the same scale at the top of a ladder high above earth, there would be a small difference in your weight. You would weigh slightly less on top of the ladder than at sea level. This is because Earth's gravity is strongest at the surface of the Earth. It gets weaker as you move away from the surface of the Earth. Next paragraph. Suppose you are an astronaut going on a trip to the moon. What will happen to your weight during the trip? First, you would weigh yourself on Earth's surface. If you watched the scale as the rocket carried you up and out of Earth's surface, you would see your weight slowly drop. It would drop more and more as you got farther from Earth. If you were far enough from Earth, it would drop all the way to zero and you would be weightless. But as you approach the moon, your weight would start to increase. It increases because of the moon's gravity. When you landed on the surface of the moon, you would not weigh the same amount as you do on Earth. You would weigh about one-sixth as much as you do on Earth. This is because the moon's gravity is not as strong as Earth's gravity. All right, and here is, right here, another little question for you. Um, read these four statements, then pick the one that is true. So remember, you guys still need to be practicing your process of elimination strategy. If you're not sure the right answer, hunt out the ones that are wrong and cross them off, right? And then explain why the statement you chose is true. Make sure to discuss gravity. So once you decide which one is true up here, explain why it is. And we're going to go to the next section here, our last section for the day, the lesson summary, no main ideas sections for this one. So lesson summary, just to kind of summarize what we read so far. What does gravity do? Gravity pulls you toward Earth's center. Gravity is a force that pulls objects on or near Earth's surface toward Earth's center. Objects fall to the ground because of gravity's force. Gravity also keeps objects on Earth's surface from floating away into space. What many people think of as down is actually the direction that gravity is pulling. Number two, gravity causes meteors. When a meteoroid in space comes close enough to Earth, gravity pulls it towards Earth. As they fall through the atmosphere, meteoroids heat up and give off light. The streaks of light are meteors. Those that do not burn up sometimes land on Earth's surface and are called meteorites. Number three, gravity is strongest at Earth's surface. The force of gravity is strongest between objects when they are closest together. Earth's gravity is strongest at Earth's surface. So, it pulls the most objects, or excuse me, so it pulls the most on objects at sea level. It pulls less on objects that are further from Earth's surface, such as objects in outer space. Number four, all objects have gravity. All objects have gravity that pulls other objects toward their center. For objects on Earth, only Earth's gravity is strong enough to have a noticeable effect. But the sun's gravity is strong enough to make Earth follow an orbit around the sun. The moon's gravity is also noticeable on objects that are close to it. And number five, weight is the force of gravity. A scale is used to measure weight. Weight describes how much the force of gravity is pulling you down. Astronauts that go to the moon experience weight changes as they travel. Their weight goes down to zero once they get very far from Earth, but their weight goes back up as soon as they get to the moon because of its gravity. And there is one more question here for check your understanding this is the vocab part find those definitions and remember if this is how you use those strategies right if you go to orbit and you're not sure which one orbit is don't guess don't get stuck on it go to the next one go to gravity try to plug in gravity plug in meteor um and that is all for our readings today as always you can find the activity um on our ela questions and tasks section I'll read it one more time for you guys before we sign off. And here it is. After reading the assigned text for the day, you will create a graphic to show what you learned. You can use Seesaw, Keynote, Pages, etc., or a blank sheet of paper for this assignment. You will create an image that represents what you learned today in your science reading. And there's three items that you need to include. Here's the first one. A title that represents the overarching main idea of what you read. The second one. 
include four key facts or quotes from the text in your image. Some students like to make these the border of their drawing. Um, and the third one. Include an image, either drawn or a graphic you attain somewhere else. Um, I, wanna, I want you guys to get creative with this. Um, I would love to see some of your artwork. Here's a chance to make some cool art. Feel free to share it with me on Seesaw um, or email it to me. Um, if you guys have any questions or thoughts about the video, feel free to put them in the comment section below. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.